how to learn Python with projects, but this is not going to be the type of video that you would typically expect. I'm not going to give you like step by step instructions on how to learn Python with building projects because that would be like four hours of video and that's what I'm actually doing in my mentorship with my students. But what I'm going to talk about is how building projects with Python and how learning by building projects is gonna be difficult. But the fact that it's difficult already tells you that it's the best way to learn Python. And that's why my mentorship is designed by pushing students to build their own Python projects. Building Python projects by yourself is not an easy task to do. And this is usually what my students face. They come into this world of software development alone, being the solo warriors. They don't have anyone to give them code reviews. They don't have anyone to help them. And they struggle with this idea of having motivation to do stuff and work on their projects. But you have to understand that it's not about motivation. It's more about discipline. So one of the students asked me about this. How do you have the discipline to work on these projects? I don't, I don't feel motivated was the sentence that he said to me. And I recorded this short video talking about this that I'm about to share with you. And it's a very short video. It's like four minutes, but it goes over this super simple, but so important principle about having discipline over motivation. So let's switch into that video and talk about other things that will help you learn Python better through building projects after that video. I wanted to talk about motivation and discipline. You have to understand that everything that you're doing in terms of development, it's not going to be easy. It's going to suck and it's going to be terrible in the beginning because you're starting out and you're not going to become like magically feeling to do hard stuff. Every day I have to develop hard stuff. I have to do hard features. I never feel like it, but I still sit in my, at my computer. I still do my coding stuff. I still build my features, even if I feel bad. And you can actually train yourself to do hard stuff if you keep doing hard stuff all the time. But if you just give up when it becomes hard, like I said, what's going to happen the next time? You're going to give up again and you're going to give up again. And you're never going to get past that point where you train yourself to deal with hard stuff. So what you need to do is you have to somehow force yourself to not be in your feelings. Because right now what you're telling me is I feel this, I feel that, I don't feel motivated. I never felt motivated after university, after a full-time job to sit down at my computer and still code. You know how it's like you never feel motivated, but you still do it because you have to do it. And this is how you build discipline. And if you do it like today, one hour, you forced yourself. Okay, you did it one hour. The next day you do it again and again and again and again. And then you get used to doing hard stuff and it becomes easy. And then you get find more hard stuff to do and you repeat that and you become better and better and better. Why is it so easy for me to write code and show you all the examples and just explain everything? Because I've gone through these situations myself. It used to be as hard as it is for you right now for me to actually sit down and figure out that stuff, come up with questions, come up with solutions. But if I would never force myself to even think and even come up with these questions, even figure something out, I would never get past that point. So eventually what I'm doing with this video is telling you, you have to stop be in your feelings. These feelings, I don't feel motivated. I don't want to do this today. This is not going to get you anywhere. You have to change this. You have to tell yourself, okay, I don't feel like doing this today, but I'm going to still do it. I'm going to still try it and do your best every day and repeat that the next day and you will become better. I guarantee you, if you try this for a month, try to tell yourself, okay, 
I feel like shit, I don't want to do this, I don't feel motivated, I would like to do something else, which is easy, I, I want to easy, relax, sit at my computer, watch some YouTube videos, watch some easy course that will tell me some basic stuff, but will that get you anywhere? No, it really won't, the stuff that will get you somewhere is the hard stuff, and you need to do the hard stuff. And the only way to do hard stuff over a longer period of time is by disciplining yourself, forcing yourself to do the hard stuff. Tell yourself, it's gonna be hard, but I'm gonna still do it. And this goes right into the next idea that I wanted to share, which is about applying for jobs as a software developer and looking for opportunities to actually work as a software developer. Do you think that's gonna be easy? Do you think you're just gonna take a course, learn Python, build a project, and someone is just gonna come to you and give you a job without you literally doing any effort? No, it's not gonna happen. Even if you have all of the skills, even if you have the proof that you know how to do things, there are many nuances to applying for some kind of job as a software developer. And you might face a lot of rejections in the beginning when you don't have years of experience. And it's totally fine. It's not because you're not really because something's wrong with you, but it's more about it's just the process. You have to go through a bunch of rejections before you will see some kind of results. So let's switch into the call where I talked about this. And at the end of the final section, I'm going to share a book that talks about exactly this idea, going through rejections and failures. And actually, even if it feels bad in the process, you stick with it and you keep going no matter what to achieve your goals and reach this long term success. Because Working as a software developer, it's not a short term thing. If you want to do it professionally, it's something that you're looking to do in a long term, having long term success. It's not easy in the beginning, like you're just starting out your career and it's similar in software development. Like uh, there are sometimes a bit more opportunities in software development because there are a lot of startup companies and they're willing to give chances to people who are new and teach them things, but it's still difficult. And some people, like when you're new and you're not used to rejections, it can be hard. I know it's been hard on myself sometimes when I was younger, when I tried to apply for jobs, like you're getting rejected, you're getting rejected, but it's like, it's the process you have to go through with it. And getting rejected doesn't mean that you're a bad person. It just means that uh, you got rejected and that's it. Oh, yeah. And this leads us to the final section of this video uh, where I want to share this book, Power of Passion and Perseverance. So I would recommend you to just listen to the book or listen to the summary version of the book to get the idea of what it talks about. And one of the key points of this book is about doing hard things, how you can train yourself on doing hard things and there's going to be ups and downs as you are going to start to learn Python as you are going to start to learn software development and there are going to be ups and downs as you are going to try to apply for jobs and once you will get the job as a software developer there, there will be even more ups and downs and even more failures and successes it's not gonna become easier as you're going to grow and it's totally fine because you should be going for hard things and you should be training yourself on this grit of doing hard things. So yeah, what I would suggest you to do is just check out this book, listen to it, take some ideas from it. And if it's too hard for you to find the right way to do this, you can always send me a message and we can talk about what type of Python projects could you build to get a job as a software developer.